Yeah, today's title is uh, The Church of Jesus Christ. Yeah. The scripture text is uh, Ephesians 4, verses 11 to 12. Yeah. And it gave some to the some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, uh, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, when we confess and accept Jesus as the Christ, we become children of God. As children of God, uh, we become members or parts of the body of Christ, which is the church. God desires for us to have been saved, to grow in our faith as members of the church community. He wants us to serve in building up the body of Christ, the church. Okay, uh, first, what is the meaning of the church? The term church originally uh, does not refer to a building or an organization. The church is the gathering of those called out from the world by God's grace. Yeah, in other words, it refers to the assembly of God's chosen people. <clears throat> uh, who established the church? Uh, Jesus was the one who first established the church. In Matthew uh, 11, uh, uh, Matthew 16, uh, verse 16, uh, Peter confesses, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. In Matthew 16, verse 18, Jesus says that he will build his church on this confession of faith. Jesus said, I will build my church on this rock. The rock is the confession of faith. Indeed, the church is the gathering of believers who confesses, confess and believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. What does it mean to confess Jesus is the Christ? Uh, it means that Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, who was a prophesied throughout the Old Testament, the Hebrew word Messiah and the Greek word Christ, both mean the anointed one. There are three roles associated with being anointed. A king who rules over the king, uh, the people, a king who rules over the people on behalf of God, a priest who offers sacrifices to resolve the people's sins, and a prophet who conveys God's word and will uh, to the people. Many kings, prophets, and priests came before, but none of them would overcome Satan, sin, or death. However, Jesus Christ came as the true king who bound the power of Satan. As the true priest who liberated God's people from sin through his atoning sacrifice on the cross. And as the true prophet who saved God's people from death to life. He became the way for people who had turned away 
from from God to uh, return to Him. Yeah. He became the way for people who had turned away from uh, from death to return to life. Yeah. Therefore, confessing Jesus is the Christ means that Jesus is the true king, true priest, and true prophet who has defeated Satan's power and freed God's people from sin and death. Anyone who believes and confesses Jesus as the Christ, the soul by God's great grace. It is by God's grace through faith that we can make this confession. Therefore, anyone who sincerely believes and confesses Jesus as the Christ is saved. Such a person becomes a member of the church community that shares this confession of faith. Um, the church of Jesus Christ can be divided into the universal individual church and the visible local church. The invisible uh, uh, the universal invisible church refers to the one who the one church with the Lord as its head. In Ephesians 1 verses 10, 22 to 23, uh, Jesus is ruling over all as a head of church. This means that all churches worldwide are united under the under the Lord as one church. On the other hand, the visible local church refers to the gatherings of believers in a specific area known as local church local churches. Mm. In Acts 11, uh, 22, uh, verses 22 to 26, uh, in Antioch, uh, Barnabas and Paul uh, establish the church in Antioch. Yeah. In Galatians chapter 1, uh, there is uh, another church in Galatia. Yeah. Likewise, uh, many, many, in many, many regions, uh, they were made uh, as a local church by uh, the evangelists. In the early church, due to persecution, local churches met in individual homes. For example, in Corinthians uh, 16, verse 19, uh, there is the church in the house of Priscilla and Aquila. And also in Colossians 4, verse 15, uh, there was the church in Nympha's house. These were essentially house churches. Today, uh, churches like uh, Grace Church in India, Japan, and Canada also gather in similar house church formats. Uh, let's move on to number two. Mm. What are the functions of the church? 
The church is a spiritual institution. A Christian is someone who has the Holy Spirit within them. Yeah, we have the Holy Spirit. He is indwelling within us. The church is the gathering where the Holy Spirit is present. Yeah, in my church, the Holy Spirit is present. The church has four main functions, worship, evangelism, nurturing, and service. First, worship is the most important reason the church gathers. In Romans chapter 2, verse 1, it was said, uh, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual worship. And also in John 4, verses 23 to 24, Jesus said, God is seeking uh, true worshipers who will worship in spirit and truth. Those who truly love God value worship as their life blood. Yeah. And evangelism and missions are the reason for the church's existence. Evangelism and missions are God's method of saving humanity. Evangelism and missions are the great commission of the Lord. And also, evangelism and, and missions are the church's inevitable mission. Yeah, so uh, we must devote ourselves to evangelism and missions. Uh, and the church must diligently nurture believers with God's word to help them grow in maturity. Therefore, believers should serve as workers in building up the church. Believers should be sutures entrusted with uh, the mi mis mysteries of God, serving as workers of Christ. Jesus set an example by washing the disciples' feet as a servant. We should serve one another, as Jesus said. All believers should serve as stewards in the roles they have been given. Okay, so please remember uh, the four main functions of the church. Yeah, uh, let, let us uh, uh, priority uh, worship in our lives yeah what is your priority yeah the worship mm. always yeah so let's value worship as our life blood and uh, let us devote ourselves to evangelism and missions in our fears. Uh, so that we want to uh, save others uh, uh, prepared for salvation. And also, uh, let us uh, make every effort to uh, nurture new believers with God's word. Uh, to help them grow in maturity. Uh, now, I'm serving for that. Yeah. I'm nurturing you uh, 
later you must nurture uh, our new believers okay can you serve them <laughs> of course <laughs> absolutely you can you can do it i i'm sure <laughs> uh, and also uh, later the those believers uh, will serve as workers in building up the Church of Christ. Okay. Okay, the last, uh, what is the mission of the church? In Timothy, uh, in 1 Timothy uh, 3, verse 15, the church is the guardian of truth. Yeah. And Matthew chapter 25, verse 40 said, uh, the church is the representative of Christ. Um, Mark chapter 16, verse 15, it is said, the church must faithful, faithfully fulfill the mission of world evangelization. Yeah. Preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Jesus uh, ordered to his disciples and us. So let us remember our mission. We must uh, protect this truth of Jesus Christ. And also, oh, as, as, uh, as the bridge the representative of Christ, uh, we must uh, serve others and uh, save others. We are source and light in the world. Uh, the worldly people uh, can see God's image uh, on us. Yeah. So, let's remember, we are the representative of Christ. We are Jesus' ambassador from the kingdom of God. Okay? Yeah. So, God entrusted uh, His this works to us. Yeah. So, as um, ambassadors, as uh, ambassadors, we must uh, minister uh, the church, uh, the God's works, uh, as an evangelist uh, in the field. So, uh, the church must fulfill the mission of world evangelization. Yeah. So let us pray for uh, world evangelization, India evangelization, Korea and Japan and Canada evangelization. Yeah. And 237, uh, 237 <laughs> so 237 uh, countries and 5,000 tribes uh, evangelization. We must devote ourselves to them. Okay? Yeah. All right. Uh, today, we thought about uh, the Church of Jesus Christ. Uh, he gave us the duties uh, to serve the church uh, and build up the body of Christ. Uh, all right, now let's pray. Dear Father, thank you for very important message even today. Now we have understood uh, the meaning of the church of Christ and uh, the commission and uh, functions 
Lord, we want to serve and build up the church as a member of the church. Lord, you are the head of the Christ. We are the members of the church, your body. Lord, we want to love our church and serve and devote ourselves to uh, the church's commission. Lord, please fill us with your spirit and use <coughs> us for your church, Lord. Please bless our church and all of the world churches, the body of Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.